Hey, what's up, everybody? Here to remind you that over in Landgrister, things are pretty damn awesome right now. We have an amazing collab, right? Um, and this is a good time to come back to Landgrister for a lot of players because you're getting a free SSR unit, a badass one. I think this is our first collab that we've had where they're giving away an SSR unit. Typically we would get an SR unit, right, from these collabs, and guess what? These SR units that we get from these collabs are still some of the most useful characters in the game. My most powerful healer to this day is Iris because she can teleport people and give you an amazing damage reduction and damage boost buff. And she's an SR character from uh, a collab, right? She's not even an SSR healer, and yet that is my most powerful healer just because she's so damn nifty. So they've done it again, right? Except this time, they've upgraded the hero that everyone gets for free to a full-blown SSR hero. And this guy is freaking gnarly, okay? Um, I just, all these collabs we've been playing through, uh, my list of animes to watch has just grown. Because <laughs> I definitely have to check out this anime after uh, playing through some of this and just getting some of the background information on some of the characters. This guy is really cool. Um, Anz Al Goon, Gaun, I, I, yeah, he's, he's just a badass skeleton. Um, I did see some clips of the anime, it's got some good humor in it, I dig it, right? So this is the guy that we get for free, he is gnarly, he has an amazing 3C, he's just powerful all the way around, he does great AoE, you know, I still have to build this guy, but this is pretty damn impressive, right? He also has, like, a self-teleport, where he can teleport line himself up in a position to start doing damage and stuff and he also gets a boost from the teleport so it's kind of funny we were just talking about iris and how i liked her teleport ability so much well he has his own right and he has an ability that actually turns into like two or three different abilities uh so very pliable character he can be used a lot you can do some good single target stuff with him you can do a lot of awesome aoe stuff with him great damage uh, just a gnarly character all the way around. He has uh, like a one cost uh, skill on him right now. Matter of fact, right here. Uh, what is this? The green one. I can't really. Sorry, guys. I'm like on the move and I can't really read this thing, but pretty much what this is like a 30% chance uh, to decrease damage taken by 90%. Uh, it does have a cooldown, but hey, this right here can keep your mage from getting one shot. Like, so many characters would love to have this ability. You know, pretty much one out of every three attacks, they're only going to get 10% of their damage through. So, that alone is very gnarly. It's a very cool little passive ability, right? And then, he obviously has a bunch of crazy AoEs. Um, he can make his move, he can increase his movement, um... He can heal himself. He also gets an intelligence boost of uh, the more hit points he has. So, uh, very cool, very cool character. And, of course, his skin looks amazing. This is the one he comes with. There's also another skin that makes him look like a Dark Knight with two swords. All in all, just a very gnarly character. Very happy to have him. And, really, um, I finally have a chance to run the little Spider Demon Elves. I dig the Spider Demon Elves. They look cool. And they look awesome with him, right? Uh, they just, they look good together as a bunch. Very gnarly character. Uh, and then these are the two characters that are up on the banner right now. And I gotta say, I'm pretty freaking happy with both of them. Albedo is just awesome. She's finally giving me somebody that can use these, uh, the crystal golems. So I dig that because with the factions that I run, I haven't really had anyone that can take advantage of these golems. Uh, they're very anti-magic. They also heal themselves. So it's just a great, great, uh, great tank unit, right? And one of the huge advantages this girl has is she doesn't just get to block for people one block away from her. She gets to block for everybody that's within one ring of her. So if you're standing diagonal to her, she can still naturally block for you without having to activate an ability. Of course, she does get an ability to activate, which fully increases her range to two blocks. So, uh, But it is nice to have that one ring around her constantly at all times. 
Uh, she makes her way more flexible as a tank. And this girl gets to use her defensive stat um, in an offensive way, right? So when she counterattacks, uh, she pretty much just gets to use her, I think it's her defense, and she like doubles that. I mean, this girl's going to be retaliating with a huge attack number, and she also gets a bonus to her damage. So kind of like how Leden gets two attacks to retaliate with, she just gets like an extra 60 or 70% damage. Um, there's fixed damage she can add to that. There's just all sorts of good stuff. She's a gnarly ass character. Um, and this is the girl that most people wanted to pull, right? Um, multiple builds, you can do a lot of different things with this girl. You can go with a steel rune set. Uh, you can go with a uh, thorns. I'm rocking thorns right now. This is what I've been just kind of working on. Um, so, still have to see exactly what the most optimal build is for this girl, but there seems to be a lot you can do with her. I'm even thinking uh, Hard Rock uh, would just make her very hard to kill, okay? Uh, so, this is the character that everyone's kind of been going for, and the other girl, uh, Shaltier. She is a complete and utter monster, and I think it's silly that people are sad that they got this character if they couldn't get the other girl. Uh, my personal feelings are, <clears throat> this girl's awesome. I had to get their skins just because her red armor looks so good. I mean, come on. Ronin Warrior-esque for reals over here. She just looks badass completely. This is one of the best full moon users in the game. Is it full moon or is it rough sea? I think it's full moon. When you have above 80% hit points, you get you know, plus 10% attack and defense or whatever it is. That works out super well for her. She can always bank off of that because this girl has lifesteal. She can regenerate her health. She can keep herself full on health off of the damage that she deals. And she has one of the easiest to activate act again uh, abilities in the game. Pretty much this girl's second physical attack is going to proc act again. So as soon as she gets to use her second attack, boom, she gets to act again. So if you attack somebody, and then you have somebody cast Act Again on her, she will Act Again, attack somebody a second time, and then she'll get to Act Again again off of her own Act Again. It's pretty freaking awesome. This girl can very easily just go three times in a row, and uh, she's a heavy hitter, right? She's a heavy hitter. She gets to lifesteal off of everything. Um, she's just an amazing character through and through. I totally dig this girl, and I think she can take full advantage of full moon, and most people are going to have a lot of full moons just sitting around, so she's kind of easy to roll for, which is kind of a big deal. I mean, you could put Breeze on her, but you're probably not going to have as many Breeze uh, scrolls laying around. It's just kind of the way that I look at it. So I'm actually having a, a ton of fun with this character. Um... And this is what I've been doing. Like, I've wanted to really kind of review them, but I, I figure I should get in here and at least cover, you know, the different heroes that we get so people kind of have an idea of what's going on because you might want to get in here even if you don't feel like dropping anything uh, for these characters. You might as well go in here and get this guy that's casting Skyfall right now. Get this guy for free because he just wrecks. He's absolutely awesome. Totally dig it. And I figured I might as well just showcase some of these other characters while I run around and kind of wreak havoc. Um, I've only had a couple days to build these characters up, and obviously I have still been paying attention to the other gotchas that I'm playing. It's a, <laughs> it's a busy time of the year right now. All these gotchas are trying to promote everything that they're putting out. Oh look, and Vampire Girl also gets like a 50% damage, physical damage reduction shield um, after she acts. So that's cool. It makes her kind of, it makes her a lot more tanky um, as a, a, a shock trooper. Ooh. So, and she runs great with vampire bats. So I will be doing a lot with that character. Unfortunately, they broke her movement. They broke everybody's movement. What can I do? Wow, this turns a wash. I should have saved my AoE. No, regardless, I just kind of wanted to show these characters being run around um, and show them in their skins. Uh, I think we're going to make it, though. 
So this girl gets to, um, not only is she going to use Reflect and Thorns, but she gets to double her attack to 1,200 from 400 because it's going to be double her defense. So she's really good at retaliating. And now that I have a Tears Helm for her, um, do I have... Yeah, she has the Tears Helm on, so she, her retaliation is increased by that much. It makes a huge difference when she's already getting a huge percentage boost to her damage when she retaliates. And this is this girl's second attack. She would proc act again right now if the map wasn't over. So that is why I dig these characters. I think they have a great design. They look great. They play different. They're unique. Um, all in all, another solid collab uh, over here in Landgrisser. So like I said, get in here. Get this bad mamma jamma right here. Get him for free. Get them for free. We'll actually take a look at these characters. They're also letting us uh, run 18 of these, uh, what are these, the, the, the bond levels, right? So this is a good time to get in there and actually shard some of your heroes up. Instead of only being able to run 9 of these a day, right now we're up to 18. So take advantage of that with these new characters that they're giving us. Um, I'll also have a video coming up soon with... Aaron Rod over here and her custom build that I did for her because I'm the only one that uh, built her this way like I can literally show you every every other Aaron Rod in this game is built different than mine and this build actually works but before I showcase it I do want to get her to six star and I'm 134 out of 150 shards uh, and the reason I'm waiting to get her fully to six star before I showcase her is because that extra star empowers the build that I'm doing for her specifically a lot when it's all said and done with what I'm doing with her every little percent towards damage reduction counts and when she gets start up she actually does get you know, a few more damage reduction with each stack and when you stack so much damage reduction together uh, you get like to this level this threshold and that's where I'm trying to get this girl so taking her to six star is definitely going to empower her a lot uh, but she's already looking gnarly um, I have her 3c unlocked so she can get that 90% damage reduction so we will talk about her because she's a whole nother video but it's nice to be able to keep working on her and getting shards for her uh, and Helena because I love this girl I love the AoE that she does right uh, for me personally she's replacing Leon it's finally time that on my account Leon's getting replaced I just like how Helena works and I just like how busty she is and just her AoE, how amazing she is, how much fixed damage she can apply, the different builds you can do with her. I dig it. She changes the map around, um, kind of sets up little booby traps, kind of. You can look at it that way. So I just dig her. I think she's a great design and why wouldn't I, right? She's already almost up to 7k power and she still needs to be start up. I got two girl bros. I'm debating right now whether or not to... Um, they are letting you buy a pack for $20 where you can pick any item or any accessory. And I'm honestly debating whether or not I should get my last and final tier helm that I need. Uh, because it would go on the two girl bros. But I'd be giving up an accessory of my choice. So I still have to weigh it out and really think about it. But being able to get any item that you want for $20... Bucks, um, I think that's going to help a lot of people out. A lot of people that want a pair of Apex boots or like a very rare accessory that really makes a build for a character. You know, you got a chance to get that now just for 20 bucks instead of having to just randomly get SSR drops from the Dragon. Um, accessories are harder to get in this game. So, I don't know. I have that option. I have that option. Two Girl Bros are definitely awesome and I want to get this guy over 7k. I... I'm about to get his 3C, and I can't wait to see what I can do with that. He's finally getting his upgrade. I predicted a long time ago that when this character got their 3C, they would just be effing gnarly as hell because Togro Bros were completely overlooked when they first came out. Which, I mean, come on, they were on a banner with Yusuke and Hiei. Of course, they're going to be overlooked a little bit. And finally, we get... Pretty much the first healer in the game that I've really been excited about. I mean, Wyler's cool, and I like his skin, but this girl is just insane. She can drop Act again back to back, right? And then she can also empower everybody's troops on a whole nother level. Um, and she can do some healing, 
Um, so she is an awesome character. I dig Flo. And this bitch ain't exactly in here trying to sell me auto insurance. So this is the flow that I like. I'm working on her. 54 out of 100. She's at 6K. My Iris is still at a higher power level than this girl, but she's well on her way. Um, and I will be investing into flow. Absolutely love this character. And then we get to these these new characters down here. Uh, we finally get to Shaltier. Here she is, right over 6K. A lot of work to do on her still. Um, I thought about putting a tier helm on her, but like, what's the point? She'd never activate it. It's typically reserved for somebody that uses chivalry or uses some kind of tank ability so that when they activate something or like a, a faction buff, as long as they don't attack that turn, the tier helm gets activated. So for me, I put Gia's helm on this girl instead. I dig the damage reduction. Uh, it helps with her natural damage reduction that she gets once every couple of turns, right? And this thing also gives uh, magic defense just in case somebody does get to throw a fireball at this girl. This will help her survive it. And guess what? If she survives it, she can come back from it. Because one of her thing is, uh, first of all, when her hit points at 100%, her attack increases. So she gets a stat increase for being at full health, which is why I run uh, full moon on her, right? Because you want her at full health to get her uh, stat bonus, um, and I might as well be getting other bonuses from her being at full health too, since it's so easy for her to heal herself, right? After, pretty much this is going to tell you, uh, attack when her health, health is full, attack increases by 13%, and mobility increases by 1%. It's another thing I like, her mobility increases that are just awesome. You don't necessarily have to have boots on her. Um, and after taking an action, gain physical barrier. The first time you take damage, uh, damage taken is reduced by 55%. Um, and since she has that helm, add another 10% to that, so 65% damage reduction. Um, this effect cannot be obtained for another 3 turns. So once every 3 turns, she just gets to have a 50% physical damage reduction shield up. Which is very nice for a, uh, a shock trooper, right? She's going to go in there, if she can maybe get a kill on someone and get that shield up. Uh, she can take an attack and then retaliate and she can heal herself because the very end of Vermilion Nova is when initiating battle with a melee attack this unit's hit points is restored after battle equal to 15% of the unit, unit's damage dealt um, this girl deals good damage and remember she gets to act again after her second attack so if you time it right you got two attacks in a row where you're attacking and you you are stealing health off of that so she's gonna get topped back off she's gonna be at 100 percent health she's gonna get her increase to her attack and she's going to get increased from her full moon rune set uh so it just works out very well she's a super effective unit i think um but let's look at the character everybody was excited for this bad man majama right here I mean, I get it. Uh, this girl brings a lot of options for faction teams that didn't really have, uh, like, tanks. Um, and I guess, really, for Heroes of Time, she's a tank option that's not a Lancer. Um, Kuwabara, we have, is an infantry tank, and he's a damage reduction tank. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. We have some Lancer tanks here. We have Sumeri. And we have an AoE uh, Lancer take Estelle. So this girl, she can be a demon. So she can be a demon tank or I believe, yeah, she can be an infantry tank. I love infantry tanks myself. Unfortunately, as far as an infantry tank goes, they did not give this girl the, the red, the little red guardian infantry guys. And those are my favorite ones. Um... So, but she does get to have good Lancers. She gets Lance Felixes to take hits, so she gets to add some damage reduction. Um, she's going to retaliate good, just, you know, from the hero doing damage herself. And again, she gets to tank for everybody that's within one ring of her. That's a lot better than just one block away. Um, so, very awesome character. Uh, she also gets a bonus when a friendly unit is within two blocks. Damage taken is reduced by 10%. So there's some damage reduction on top of that. See a lot of people putting the steel rune set on this girl. And I, I get it. 
like that makes sense because she's already got some damage reduction there. You put steel on her, all of a sudden she's got 20% damage reduction, right? Uh, before being forced into battle, replaces attack one with 1 1.6 times defense. So she scales off of defense like Basel scales off of magic defense, which can lead to a super effing high attack. Uh, and increased damage dealt by 50%. So unlike Leiden, who just gets two hero attacks, she's just going to get like a 50% damage boost to her attack. Uh, her retaliation. That is when she is uh, tanking. So I think just it's just really important to see who she can tank for. right? And we know that I like to run Josh and Estelle. Um, you could actually run a pretty badass Heroes of Time tank party. right? You could literally just have... Tanks for tanks for tanks, right? You could run a Stell. Uh, you could run this girl. You could run uh, uh, Sumari, Kanzaki, uh, and just bring somebody to buff them. Um, and actually, you could actually run Aaron Rod too and run like a tanky build for her. And you would pretty much have a, a very, very tanky party. Um, just a lot of fun stuff that you could do with that. So, moving on. Last, but definitely not least, uh, here he is, Mr. Anis Ul Gaon. I, I'm never going to be able to like completely pronounce his name until after I watch the anime. Uh, this guy's a nightmare. That's all, that's all we need to talk about. That's it. He's just a nightmare. Um, <laughs> intelligence increases with unit hit points up to a max of 5%. Now this is him only at 3 star, right? So it's going to be a pretty decent intelligence increase, right? After taking action, you gain one random buff effect, last one turn. It's actually a lot more useful than you think, right? Uh, and that's going to scale up as well. Very simple stuff, very powerful stuff, but his real creme de la creme are obviously his abilities, right? Um, reality slash attacks single enemy dealing 1.5 times damage with 15% increased critical chance. Before entering battle, you will attack the enemy first. So this is cool. Um, it, it's going to give him this attack first ability. So you could go up against another mage or something that you know is going to cause severe damage to you. And if you think you can take him out in one hit, this is going to let you do that without them retaliating. So you can take somebody out without taking any damage at all. One of my favorite things to do with Sakura. It's really cool that they kind of left him a way to do that. Uh, he obviously is going to get Black Hole to throw debuffs. Magic defense support, really no big deal. Here's the awesome passive I like. Body of... Effulgent Barrel? I don't... Okay, I, that must be something from the show. I don't know, but it's passive. When forced into battle, has a 30% chance to trigger. Decreases enemies' damage by 90%. This can only affect... This effect has a two-turn cooldown. So, you know, when somebody does finally reach this caster in order to attack him, one out of three attacks are just going to be null and void. That is pretty damn spiffy right there. And this is just a one-cost, one-orb cost ability. Um, so that is really cool, right? And on the other side, we have this advanced teleport, okay? Active skill instantly moves you to any block in range and reduces the damage you take by 20%. After taking action, you will recover 20% hit points. So this is cool. You can teleport into, like, a prone position where, you know, you might take a hit, but, hey, you're going to have some damage reduction, and then on your turn, you're going to heal up, um some health so this is going to give you the opportunity to teleport into like a halfway dangerous situation for maximum payout because obviously this guy has aoe's and stuff so you you could position him in a risky uh spot um with a little bit more protection right because he's gonna have that 20 percent more um that that might just help you know right so it's cool i definitely dig it it is teleport and of course this is only a one cost skill so that's awesome obviously we have skyfall this is his big aoe is bread and butter deal 0.32 aoe damage to all enemies within five block radius super effective against flyers the higher the target's mobility the more damage you'll deal um every one mobility increases damage by five percent so think about that like this is this is a flyer killer, 
right? Because it's effective, it's super effective against flyers. And on top of that, you get more damage because flyers can move five blocks. So you're going to get your 25% more damage. Now, against cavalry units, it's this might not say that it's effective against cavalry. So you're, you're, you're not going to get that, uh, that bonus damage. But cavalry still move five blocks. So you're still going to get 25% more damage to cavalry units, which is pretty damn nar nar. So Skyfall on its own is just super powerful. And then, of course, they're going to give him Dark Reaper so he can heal himself. Uh, and do great single target damage with this. Uh, just an awesome ability to have, right? Uh, and then let's see, what does he start with? Oh yeah, he just starts with, you get Lightning Strike as a freebie, you know, no big deal there. But really what's amazing that this guy has is his Awakening, uh, Wish Upon a Star. Wish Upon a Star, when you use this, you get to choose one of three different abilities. So just like the new healer girl where she has a support ability well hers is kind of different after she ends her turn um she gets a whole new set of skills to play with she gets to act like she pretty much gets to go twice every turn once with her normal uh abilities and then when her turn's over she gets to you know do like an extra support ability on anyone this guy just has this Wish Upon a Star ability. When you click on it, you get to choose one of three different wishes. Choose, uh, can choose to cast one type of prayer effect, right? After use, unit's max hit points is increased by 15%, which is interesting because this is one of the few things that I've seen that actually increases somebody's max hit points, right? And the unit is healed for 100% of hit points, can only be used one time per battle, Remember, this guy's intelligence also scales up when his health goes up, so that's pretty cool. Uh, he can also pray and increase his mobility by one. Unit's movement type becomes flyer, so he can turn himself into a flyer. You can pretty much wish for wings and he will get them. Uh, can only be used one time per battle. And then prayer three is creation. Magic damage deals 0.3 times AoE damage to multiple enemy units within the span. And the enemies... Okay, and... The enemy is on a non-defensive train. Two of their buffs are randomly changed into random debuffs. That would be really good for Arena. Straight up. After, uh, also changes Wish Upon a Star cooldown to three turns. All buff effects applied by this skill cannot be dispelled. So, just a whole ton of stuff you can do right there. You can, you know, this guy has a way to heal himself. This guy has a way to turn himself into a flyer for more movement so he can outmaneuver people while throwing AoEs, while dropping bombs. Uh, and then he has another AoE built in here that just does a ton. Uh, so, yeah, these characters are all awesome. This guy Rex, he's going to get awakened. He's going to get worked on. But I've obviously been working on his little cohorts first. Um... So, these are the characters that are up right now. Obviously, this girl and my one of my favorite little vampires in this game, this girl. Um, they, they, they do have to be pulled off of a banner. I just did a bunch of singles, and I mean, I think I pulled both of these characters in about 110 pulls, which is not that bad. Uh, Landgrister has always been a fair gotcha to me, in my opinion. Um, and actually, I want to work on this girl the most because I did, <laughs> I just dig the vampires. Let's see, can she run with the other vampire that we have in the game right now? Is there a vampire party? Oh no, we're not going to enable power saving mode. Let's see, can they run together under this faction? Oh no, well, she can run with, uh, Shalinka. Shalinka's a vampire. I was just kind of... Trying to see what kind of vampire team I could have. Uh, uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, yeah, I could always run dual factions if I wanted to do that. Regardless, this is what's up in Langrissy right now. Uh, come and get it. At least, uh, at least get your free SSR character. He is definitely awesome. Looks amazing, right? And he gets a really cool skin, so... Uh, if there's anything I missed, if there's anything you guys want me to cover, let me know. Uh, we did not have any new items come out for, like, this uh, this collab. And I don't know, maybe maybe they will drop something like that. Um, they just released these bundles right now. 
Um, might as well cover those real quick. Pretty much. There's one of them in here that lets you get any treasure that you want. You can get any SSR weapon, armor, hat, or accessory. Accessories are probably going to be the number one thing that people get because they're the hardest thing to get. I was thinking about getting a tier helm, but I have to go over everything and make sure that that's really the choice that you know I really want to do. Um, there's a huge Trinity Voucher gift pack. Always get that for 20 bucks. You get the most pulls out of that. I always get those. And then there's a gift pack here where you can just choose any character shards that you want. Of course, this does exclude limited characters, but, uh, you know, Flo's in here, and this would be an easy way to power up Flo or Helena or any of the non-limited characters that you're working on right now. I don't know if I'm going to do that one personally. Um, I think I'm just going to go for the accessory or whatever. So that's pretty much it. That's what we got going on right now. Um, they might drop another banner soon. We got nothing up right now except for this uh, 